these things that we have seen, synchronization, locking, these are things that happen. And they happen in a variety of settings, not just with things that drive or things that spin. Let's consider a pair of universities. I don't know, what are they called? Let's say Pransvard and Hartown. I'm just making this up here, people. And what happens is each year, these universities announce their tuition prices. And each year, of course, the tuition price goes up. But by how much? Let's model this as a discrete time dynamical system. Let's say that P sub n is the tuition for Pransvard in year n, and H sub n is the tuition for Hartown. And the natural dynamics is this. Pn plus 1 is Pn plus 3200. So every year, the natural price increase at Pransvard is $3,200. Now, Hartown, being a little fancier, goes up by $3,300 each year, and this gives you an uncoupled discrete time dynamical system, and every year, tuition goes up, and Hartown is going to be increasing faster than Pransvard. But let's assume that there's some small mutual influence on the prices, something that depends on the price difference. Let's say that every year, Pransvard looks at Hartown's prices and takes 3% of the difference and adds that to its tuition increase. Hartown does the same thing with Pransvard, but is less severely influenced. It's just a 1% difference. Now we have a coupled dynamical system, and what happens? Let's do the math. Let's let phi be the state difference, p minus h. Then we're going to look at the induced dynamics on phi. What is that? Well, phi n plus 1 is, by definition, p n plus 1 minus h n plus 1. We know that p n plus 1 is p n plus 3200 minus 0.03 times phi n, because phi is p minus h. Then we subtract from this hn plus 1, which is quantity hn plus 3300 plus 0 0.01 phi n. Combining this together, you see a pn minus hn term out in front. That's really phi n minus 0 0.04 phi n minus 100. That's 3200 minus 3300. Put all this together, what do we get? We get 0 0.96 phi n minus 100, that's phi n plus 1, and this is really a driver's system where you have two different natural speeds for the drivers. So in the end, what we get is the one-dimensional dynamical system on the price difference. Phi n plus 1 equals 0 0.96 phi n minus 100. Now, if we solve for the equilibrium, what do we get? The equilibrium phi star satisfies phi star equals 0.96 phi star minus 100. Do a little algebra, we get that phi star is negative 100 divided by 0 0.04. That is negative 2,500. So we have this one equilibrium. And what type of equilibrium is it? Well, look at the right-hand side. What's the coefficient of the linear term? 0.96. That's less than 1 in absolute value. This is a discrete time dynamical system. So this system converges to a stable equilibrium in which P minus H is negative 2,500. That means at this stable equilibrium, Hartown always charges $2,500 more than Pransvard. It's as if they've colluded to fix the tuition, and every year their tuition goes up by exactly the same amount, so as to keep the price difference between them at $2,500. Now notice, there's no collusion, there's no collaboration here. Each College has its own natural price increase, and they're different, but a small influence where they look at each other and adjust their prices just a tiny bit, that's enough to drive the system into a stable equilibrium where it's as if they are colluding in order to fix the tuition. That's not the only example we can look at. There's a whole host of interesting examples involving locomotion. What happens to your arms when you walk? 
walk around a little bit and don't think about what you're doing and then look at your arms and see what they're doing. They are swinging back and forth. And each arm is kind of reminiscent of a pendulum, but it's sort of a little more complicated than that. How would we model something like this? Well, let's think. The natural inclination might be to figure out all the different joint angles. You got your shoulder, you got your elbow, you got your wrist. You might want to assign masses to all the different components of your arms. You have to take into account the torque as your shoulders are swinging back and forth, what kind of spring constants you have. Boy, that would be a mess. Or you could say, look, as your arm is swinging back and forth, it's executing a periodic motion. It's kind of like a spinner. And that's going to be a really good way to go because your two arms coupled together are something like a spinner system with two spinners. Now the interesting question is, what type of coupling function do you have? Your arms are swinging out of phase, like an anti-synchronization. What type of coupling function would give that? It wouldn't be sine of phi. You might want to think about that a little bit. What is it that's actually affecting that coupling? Is it, is it something to do with your shoulders or your waist? Some kind of torsional spring? All kinds of interesting questions there. But there's more. What happens with your legs? Imagine a person walking, or if you're able, walk in a straight line and see that your legs are executing periodic motions. And they're kind of coupled together with your arms, and they're kind of in sync with your arms, but maybe not in the way that you might guess. Walk around, take a look, see what you see. What happens if instead of two legs, you have many legs? I don't mean you having many legs. I mean, you've got something like a, a robot that has four legs or six legs, or maybe many, many legs. And the way in which locomotion can efficiently happen is going to involve coordination of these legs executing periodic motions. It's as if you've got a very, very large coupled system of spinners. That is super cool. Imagine what else you might be able to model with this idea of working with spinners. One of the coolest systems out there that you might be lucky enough to see someday if you're outside in the summertime, in the evening, is a whole group of fireflies that are individually flashing at some rate. They, they flash on, then they flash off. And a collection of these can sometimes spontaneously converge into a synchronized or a nearly synchronized state. Why? Because each firefly is observing its neighbor and it's looking at when its neighbors flash on or flash off. And just a little subtle influence in how it changes its own internal timing for executing that periodic flashing can get the entire system to converge to a synchronized state. That is so cool. There are so many other things that you might be able to at least understand in terms of coupled systems. Now, let's be honest. One-dimensional dynamics cannot accurately model real complex systems in nature, but we can identify interesting dynamical phenomena. The things that we've learned, equilibria, periodic orbits, stability, this is one way in which even simple dynamical systems can be truly useful.